We discuss the concept of community, but something we need to understand about communities is they tend to change over time. Uh, they can change because the community has been disturbed and needs to regenerate itself. They can change because we have an area of totally new uh, ground, say a lava flow has occurred, or a new island has formed in the ocean, and organisms need to migrate into that and, and form the first communities. So we have several terms here we need to be very clear about. The first is succession. And succession merely means a change in a community over time. We have two primary modes of succession. Uh, one of them is called primary succession and the other secondary succession. Primary succession happens in an area where there never has been a community before. And again, the idea of uh, a community growing on lava flows after the lava is cooled and rock starts to break down into soil. Uh, that would be a good beginning of a, of a primary community. When you go out in your part of the country and look around, for example, of a primary community, uh, pretty good examples. Anytime you can find a barren piece of rock and you see some growth on it that we call lichens, looks kind of like a crust growing on the rock. Those lichens are actually a, a, a communal organisms. They're made, they're made up of a fungus and an alga that work together. The fungus holds the whole thing to the rock and actually dissolves the rock away to form soil, providing minerals to the algae, blue-green algae that's living in between the cells of the fungus. The algae captures sunlight and uses the materials that the uh, fungus has broken loose from the rock in order to produce food for both of them. So this is the very beginnings of primary succession. As the lichens continue to work, the rock will be broken down into smaller and smaller particles, eventually become soil, and provide a growth medium for other kinds of organisms to move in, different types of plants to form new communities. Secondary succession is when we already have a community, but something happens to destroy that community. Uh, a common type of occurrence is a forest fire. We have a forest, the forest burns down, there's no longer a forest in the area. In that soil, there will still be seeds, there will be some organisms still alive, and things will start to sprout. We'll also have some organisms we call weeds, uh, organisms that are easily distributed, highly adaptable, grow very readily. Things like dandelions are a very good example of a weed. Uh, they can get into disturbed areas and start to grow. And these will establish a, a, a beginning pioneer community in the area and will change the conditions. They'll cover the soil, they'll keep moisture uh, in the soil, they'll make the conditions suitable for other organisms to migrate into the area. We'll start to have some of the seeds uh, sprout from the trees that were there. Birds will come in and bring other seeds and we will have a series of changes that this community will pass through uh, as it moves from the pioneer or weedy community up to what we call the climax community for the area. The kind of organisms that typically based on the climate and the soil of the area will live, that will exist there. And that should be fairly similar to that forest that we started with. Another good example of secondary succession is uh, when we go into an area and clear forests and clear the land and start farming. Uh, we will keep monocultures of different crops on that uh, soil for a long period of time. And eventually, oftentimes, uh, farming families move to the city the land lies fallow, it's not used anymore, and, and the plants start moving in. Again, weedy species then uh, supplanted by other species and moving back towards the climax of the surrounding area. I know uh, as a child I live in an area of open grassland that had recently been farmed. Uh, trees started moving into the grassland and now the area totally surrounding my mom's house 50 some years later uh, is primarily the oak hickory woodland area that we would find 
uh, in most parts of eastern Oklahoma.